Hello plant people, I am sitting with Whitney Wheelock, who is with me, who is an international Tantra teacher. And I've invited him to share with us uh, some of his knowledge and wisdom uh, surrounding what uh, traditional Tantra really is all about. And it's really a great privilege to introduce him to you and to invite him to share with us today. So welcome Whitney. Mm -hmm. So to get started with me, tell me uh, a little bit about your training. Um, what would you like to share just to <laughs> tell us a little bit about you? <clears throat> I have been studying, let's see, I, I left the U.S. I was born and raised in the U.S. Uh, I left the U.S. to explore something other than, than that culture and what was going on in my life at the time, which was um, I had just... I had just left a job as a um, corporate wine sales or manager. Uh, so um, I worked for <clears throat> a big distributor, international distributor of wine, and it was fun, but I always kind of wondered what I was going to do when I grew up. Um, and so I, uh, I just went to explore. I went to go play soccer in Germany, and that was a way to get out of the U.S., but then I found that Germany was very similar and kind of the corporate psychological ethos of, of the modern world. So I decided to keep going and, and I went to Thailand. And within two weeks of being in Thailand, I met a, an Indian yoga teacher. And that was about 12 years ago. And I studied with him for about 10 years. So I've, I have been away from that ashram for about two years. But for 10 years, I was there living in residence and, and learning for many years and then eventually teaching and mm. <clears throat> and then an, an integral part of the the um, ashram and the everyday teaching and sharing culture there mm. yeah so a decade of, of of really immersing myself into the kaula tantra tantric tradition and doing doing pujas to Kali Devi and practicing my yoga and teaching and sharing all that I had been shared with. So it's kind of now I'm exploring and getting out of, you know, it was really intensely there for, for 10 years. And now I'm kind of exploring the greater world and, and connecting with really beautiful people here. Quite a lot in South Africa, one of my, um, well, one of, a woman who came in, studied um, Valentina Leo she came and studied mm -hmm. at the ashram mm -hmm. and I have uh, I've come to I came last uh, April to study with her her perspectives and, and what mm -hmm. she had been working on and developed and bringing to the to the world so they were quite interesting yeah. we know Valentina she's yeah. she's been a lovely uh, teacher to this community as well it's yeah. been wonderful to have her share with us yeah so yeah. she has been a, a remarkably beautiful part of my kind of um, foray into the greater world of, of uh, world, greater world Tantra, mm -hmm. Tantra, but she also explores just life very vibrantly, so it's been mm -hmm. nice to come down and then from her to connect with, with this community that's down here the, the plant community, the Tantra community, um, just many really beautiful, vibrant human beings, mm -hmm. truly mm -hmm. Um, I've had the privilege of spending uh, a few days with, with Whitney and uh, yesterday we were actually driving and drove past a shop that sells Ferraris and Whitney was telling me how there was a point in his life at which he would have gone to that shop in his youth and, and looked at which Ferrari to buy. <laughs> and uh, Whitney's background is, you know, in his youth he studied economics. Yeah. And how does it feel to, to now be a global nomad basically <laughs> and to have let go of all of that and to now follow this path of, of non-attachment uh, freedom I mean it feels very free you know I I still I go home and <clears throat> I'll I'll spend time with my friends who have Audis and BMWs and they'll let me drive and and it's still fun <laughs> to get back into all of that uh, and then in India you know you the roads are so small and shitty and you get on a, a motorbike with even a little bit of power and you feel like you're on a racetrack and uh, and so i still play with that uh, and it's it's 
it's fun to live in all of these worlds, but um, not to have all that went with that, you know, to at the place where I was looking at Ferraris with my ex-wife, um, it wasn't a place of, of real freedom. It was a place of momentary mm -hmm. comfort, mm -hmm. but um, not true, true comfort, true human expression and freedom. So it, you know, it's much nicer to be here and <laughs> to be hanging out and um, to be, <laughs> To be able to move through these worlds, but um, not be limited by them. So we 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 can describe you as the monk who sold his Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. Uh, I almost bought one. Uh, <laughs> didn't ended up getting two Audis instead. But um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was close. It was fun to to look at them and think about that world. So, in terms of of Tantra, before I asked you just to describe um, Tantra a bit to us. Could I, I ask you just to describe it a little bit in terms of what, what it is Tantra can, can give us? Hmm. And what it's given you? Sure. Tantra, it's kind of the description of what it is and what it gives are interrelated. Um, Tantra has given me an understanding of myself beneath or beyond the, the conditional understanding of myself, the societal, familial, even, even physical understandings of myself, which are all very important pieces to understand and to understand how they, how they play into this dance of Devi, of the, the goddess, the expressing expressing aspect, the vibrant dancing, flowing aspect of the absolute. <clears throat> it gives the tantras, as, as the traditional text called tantra, uh, they give a, a very subtle, very detailed, very precise understanding of the whole spectrum of, of metamorphosis from the absolute undifferentiated consciousness down to this seemingly differentiated reality. And so we know our connection and our, not even our connection, but our, our, our nature as that undifferentiated absolute consciousness. And what would you say we under, undifferentiated from? That what we are undifferentiated from? Well, we are, by definition, we are, there is, there's nothing to undifferentiate from, right? We perceive differentiation. And so Tantra is the practices um, and the, the explanation and the, the, the call to experience your undifferentiated na nature getting away from your assumption of your seeming experience of differentiation. So in other words, there's no separation from you and what is divine, that you are. You are the divine. You are the divine. Yeah, there's no separation, so that means that there isn't even a separation between you and the divine, because you are the divine expressing her play. Mm -hmm. Everything is the expression, mm -hmm. the play, the lila of of the divine mm. Mm. yeah and um you know what what my experience has been is is that this is a path of of liberation a path of 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 stepping into one's bliss into one's freedom through through non-attachment sure do you agree with that um, not really, because liberation by definition means that you are liberating yourself from so, some sort of limitation. And it's not a path of liberation, it's a path of understanding that, you're, that you, there is nothing to liberate from. Mm. Right? So you're already liberated even if you don't, you, there is no liberation, that's not even a correct, you're already, you are the absolute expressing her freedom, mm. even if you sense that you need to be liberated, that you are liberating yourself, that you are not liberated, whatever in that spectrum, you're still her veiling herself or unveiling herself 
in her play and her dance of, of this, this delight mm. to experience herself. And by her, you'd, you, that would be Shakti? Many names, many any, names. any, you know, Mary, Shakti, um, any, any of the, yeah. any, any goddess, they're all, according to the Tantras, they are, mm -hmm. they are facets of, a, of a diamond, of a jewel. Yeah. And am I correct that when we talk about goddess, it's, it is just, it's still God. It's just the feminine expression of God. So the feminine and masculine are, are, are one. It's just the feminine is the, the active expression, the creative expression of Sh the same thing. Not quite because <clears throat> it's not the feminine aspect of God, which we usually term as masculine. It's not the feminine aspect of the essential, which is masculine. The essential is not masculine. In, in the tantras, in, in the Vedas, the essential is Brahman with an N. Brahma is the, the yang, yin and yang, is the masculine or yang. Masculine, I, I feel, has a gender um, connotation, so I usually use um, yin and yang, and that's, that's what um, my teacher used. Um, so this, this idea of, of yin and yang is perhaps more clear it's a it's a from Chinese yes. philosophy yes which is event which is from the the Vedic philosophies you know so okay. eventually you can go all the way back but this this um, yin yang is is one reality they're exactly exactly equal mm. if you look at the the symbol of yin yang mm -hmm. um, in the Tantra in the Vedas Brahman with an N is neuter, mm. and that is the absolute undifferentiated consciousness. So it has no no idea of of polarity. Mm. And then from there, depending on the perspective that you look at, um, what would be considered may maybe the more orthodox would say that the first shift, the first tapwa, is is Shiva. But the tantrics see that that first shift takes some dynamic. Mm. There's something dynamic about the first initial shift from undifferentiation to a, the slightest mm. differentiation. And so by definition, she is the only dynamic aspect in the tantras. So really she is the first, she is the, the first primordial shift that even would then create the Shiva tapwa. Yeah. And then the full expression of Shiva, Shakti, Sada Shiva, and then it goes down to the the different all the tapwas and all the different they're just explanations of how she how brahman metamorphosizes but then underlying the tantras will say that underlying is always she because there's that dynamic nature mm. that has expressed because we're here mm. that's how we know because mm. this is happening yeah what, I, what i've found very interesting is that with tantra there's an extremely academic side to it where you can go into the sanskrit and then there's also an extremely experiential side where you, you don't need to, and yet you can, you can do both as you choose to, because it's experiential by its very nature. The minute you embark on the tantric path, you, you start sure. to just experience it. And it's, it's so very simple, and yet there is this incredible path of learning as well to satisfy the mind, or to silence the sure, mind, so sure. to speak. <clears throat> I would say that there was no intention for academic mm. exploration in the tantras. That's a modern, I mean, that's how we have explored it often because mm. the, the academics came in mm. to look at it. That's a modern institution. Mm. It's a modern phenomenon that, that postdates the tantras themselves. Mm. These are all experiential. Um, they're oral. They were oral yes. and then they were written. So it really, it was a, it was a, Transmission. A transmission. Yes, they're very precise and they're absolutely logical, mm. but they're they're dynamically logical. Mm. They're dynamically rational, and so it does. It absolutely. I agree with you that it it will. It helps with to alleviate the um, desire of the mind mm. to have some sort of foundation, something to hold on to, mm -hmm. so that when when we have a crisis of experience. The mind, which we often turn to mm. to make sense of things, has something to hold on to. Yes. Um, but without the experience, it's like I always talk about um, about making uh, concrete. Mm. So you have the powder of the cement and the the structure of the stone, and you mix them together, and they have something solid. Without it, the stone is just rubble, and the powder will just disintegrate. Yeah. 
but together they form something solid. So experience with the the say the texts and the system mm -hmm. and the found and the structure mm -hmm. gives gives really a, a dynamic like like our bones and our skin. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the structure of an internal skeleton, but then it's made fluid and dynamic with the with with all of the vibrancy of the blood and the skin and the muscles and all the softness. Yes. Yeah, but it has an internal structure. Yes. So that's where I think it's very important to have both because there's a modern there's a modern tantric movement that <clears throat> that I don't think gives um, gives much relevance to that structure. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot I see a lot of crises that that are um, that occur and there's there's very little mm -hmm. To keep people give people that structure yeah i mean let's face it if, if, if one has to google what is tantra um on the internet you know what one finds is is just sexuality and sure. uh, you know what we what we tend to call neo tantra sure and um and and the perception is it is that that is what tantra is sure and and people are drawn to tantra ex expecting um to, to to engage with something that's just going to give them incredible orgasms sure. and yet Tantra is a very profound spiritual path and spiritual practice which is all-encompassing sure um, and yet it, it it seems to be inaccessible in terms of what we can access in a, in a public domain uh, yeah fortunately there's a lot more coming out now um, there's a lot more accessibility. There are there are um, there are s people who are very um, skilled with Sanskrit who are doing making translations. Christopher Wallace, Harish Wallace um, has some really nice translations. Um, Jai Dev Singh is it's more he's more technical, but also so that would be Christopher Wallace with um, his work Tantra Illuminated and yeah. Recognition Sutras for those yeah. of you that are interested. And then Jai Deva Singh <coughs> has um, has the Pratyabhinaya Hridayam and the Spandikarikas and um, and Parichrishka Vivarnam, which are maybe quite a little bit more technical. I think Harish Wallace's work is more accessible um, and 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 beautiful, um, still as precise. Um, I think different perspectives. You you, you just get different. Um, yeah, different perspectives, and you can kind of create. Since we're not talking, since we're not talking about really getting into the Sanskrit itself, mm -hmm. having some perspective is nice. But I would, um, but there, that's another conversation. It's it's now getting more accessible. Mm -hmm. It's not so so foreign and and neo tantra. People now know that there is a, a tantra and a neo tantra, and and both have their place. <clears throat> I think that there's a lot a lot to be learned from from authentic neo tantric practices. Authentic in the sense of honest and and the vulnerability and not the not just looking for um, for say um, I don't know an environment to 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 facilitate easy sexual encounters, mm -hmm. which is fine if that's what you're looking for. It's great, but as far as far mm -hmm. as what we're talking about tantra, um, self exploration and self knowledge and mm -hmm. self integration and illumination uh, mm -hmm. is a different thing. But yeah, what you can find on the internet, um, it's who knows about anything, right? I mean, any subject, yeah. the internet is the yeah. quagmire. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what we've been trying to do in, in Blind People is to create an awareness of spiritual practice that can help ground you in, in your path. Because working with plant medicine is, plant, plants are a tool, but it's important to have a practice around the tool. And it, and it seems that the more mm -hmm. we go down this path, we, we come to certain realizations such as oneness. And what better um, practice to engage in than an ancient practice that's been talking about oneness for how many thousands of years? <laughs> yeah, a long time. Yeah. So Tantra is a very legitimate and, and very powerful and very grounding practice to, to look to. So how... How would you suggest one get started in tantra? Mm. Um, I think I think this 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 book Tantra Illuminated mm -hmm. by Harish Wallace I think is a is a very good introduction to the kind of um, texts mm -hmm. because tantra tantra as a science are those 
is that information that is presented in those things that are called tantras. Yeah. And so if you want to know about tantra, then you read the tantras. They're in mm. Sanskrit, mm. which many of us don't speak. Um, there are or read. There are many translations. This is Tantra Illuminate is a compilation mm. of of Harish Wallace's work yes. of studying many different um, texts, many <clears throat> studying with different teachers, and getting a what I feel in my studies of of a decade. Um, it he he presents it in a very digestible way, mm. and he brings. You know, there's mm -hmm. so many different resources. So that's a very good one. The practices, um, Tantra Yoga, I, I have been studying and practicing a form of Kaula Tantra Yoga for some years. And am I correct that yoga actually originated from Tantra? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different... There's a book um, by James Mallinson called Roots of Yoga. And it actually just throws everything kind of in the wash. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting book because it doesn't really, it doesn't really, it, it, it answers the question by saying that there's no real answer mm. because there's there are so many different texts saying so many different things. It's quite a quite an interesting book, which also then comes mm. to you need to feel these things for yourself. You you just said it's a mm. to, go ahead. And I suppose it doesn't matter. It's it's just that they go hand in hand, don't they? Yoga. Yeah, they absolutely go hand in hand. Um, yeah. um, the Hatha Yoga perspective, the, the Patanjali Yoga Sutras mm -hmm. um, are seen by some to be non-tantric. Um, I think that you can find, you know, you can find <laughs> parallels and, and there are really, really insightful mm -hmm. and very meaningful things in all of these um, perspectives. Is anything really non-tantric? <laughs> sure. I mean, Tantra, yeah, they would, my, the teacher that I studied with for many years, um, he, um, he would say that he defined Tantra as the, the essence, the essential reality. So they're the essence of the traditional systems. So the orthodox systems, it's like a car. Yeah, you, you can you can see a car, you can drive a car, you get in the car, you go to the shop, you go to school, you do what you need to do, having no idea what a transmission is, no idea what a catalytic converter is, no idea what, what internal combustion is. You don't need to know all those things. Yes. You take it to somebody who knows what's going on. If it's if it's not working, yes. most of the time it works, you go do that. Yes. Tantra is understanding all of these things, the yes. internal workings, the all of the all the wiring and mm. all of the the um, exhaust system and the transmission system, all of those little things. So you know for yourself how to optimize and you can go in and kind of tinker with that mm -hmm. and really do. If you just want to go along and everything's going fine, nice. If mm -hmm. things break down, you may have to go to a tantric to get it fixed, mm -hmm. like you would have to go to a mechanic. Mm -hmm. You can also understand some of that for yourself. And it's not all or nothing. Mm -hmm. But you had mentioned something that these are ancient traditions and blah, blah, blah. That's not so important as does it make sense to you mm -hmm. when you're in your truth are you expanding with this information does it and and the expansions and the contractions are there mm -hmm. more expansions than contractions and are you being honest with yourself and then you know you read them and feel how they they resonate with you mm -hmm. um, because it's your life and to just give yeah. yourself over to the tantras as this is it you're not building something for yourself Mm. So it feels like Tantra is really about dipping into the integrity and authenticity of beingness in oneself. I would say authenticity. authenticity. I think integrity is a is kind of a strange word for me yeah. because I think everybody is actually um, has integrity with the situation and the tools that they have. Mm. I think authentic sometimes mm. there is a that can be not so much right. i think that people can get away from their authenticity okay. and tantra is a, if you want authenticity it's a very good mm. these are very good tools to mm. find that mm. also another resource um valentina is is teaching this yoga um, she teaches retreats i don't know she doesn't really have a regular yoga practice mm. as far as this tantra yoga, tantra yoga but um that is a she does teach once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know many other resources down here in South Africa, um, but I will be so yeah. I will be soon opening a, a center where people can come and have a regular practice. But she's also doing. I mean, there are see the 
I don't know really the resources to recommend because there are there's a tantric community here that is very active, but I haven't really worked so much with them, so I, I, I hesitate to say that you know these practices or these people or whatever are, are um, doing things that because I haven't done it, so I don't want to say what works for people. Mm. Um, yeah, but I believe that you will be returning to South Africa next year, hopefully. Yes, Valentina and I are talking about doing something in um, April or May. That would be fantastic. And, and, and we yeah. definitely will keep everyone informed in terms of how to contact with me and uh, the, any events that come up. Beautiful. So that would be yeah. fantastic. So yeah, you have I've, our full support on that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've enjoyed being in South Africa a lot. I have found really a, um, a very, very much a, a home here. So mm. it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just something I just wanted to mention, um, those of you that are interested in getting started, as Whitney was talking about with Christopher Wallace's um, audiobook, well, or, or book, uh, Tantra Illuminated, from my personal experience, I, I really enjoyed working with his audiobook. I find it's a lot more accessible to listen to the spoken word. So have a look at uh, Tantra Illuminated in the audiobook format. I think you might enjoy that. I think that uh, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming in, in, in the written text, but there's something really special in, in listening to um, the spoken word, and it's something that I, I come back to over and over and over again. It's just so so rich and prosaic. It's quite a, a nice tool to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he also has, <clears throat> he also has um, uh, I forget what the website is, but if you you search for Harish Wallace there's some offerings online for mm -hmm. some free things and he also has a patreon page um, how do you things. spell Harish because that that's his initiated name am I yes. correct h-a-r-e-e-s-h -E 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 w-a-l-l-i-s or Christopher he also goes by Christopher Wallace Christopher, a yes. lot of it is so if you're not finding it in one um, you can check the other fantastic mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's great to have um, really quality information out there and uh, we're looking forward to seen some of your really quality information out there at some point because soon, soon. <laughs> you yeah, have so yeah, much yeah, to yeah, share yeah, and so yeah, much yeah. to give and i've been relaxing for a couple of years so yeah now as one, we'll, we'll jump in as one stuff. needs to <laughs> yeah yeah i've been enjoying <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah thank you thank absolutely. you so much for, you, for the explanation sure. and the sharing for sure for sure thank and you looking forward thank to you. welcoming you back to south africa soon yeah coming <laughs> home again yeah, <laughs> thank, you, sure. thank you whitney thank you everyone thank you all.